if that works. Oh, my gosh. I see sound activity. Wow, amazing how things come together when you have the right equipment, right? How is everyone doing this evening? Let me move this out of the way so that I can see all you beautiful people who have joined us this evening. Yes, yes, yes. So run behind for a moment. I couldn't get my slideshow that I worked so hard on last week to show up on the TV, so I was fighting that, and time got away from me. So I apologize for the delay. How is everyone doing this evening? I'm Eve with the Baby Booty, and we are going to be discussing centering things. Yay! So one of our viewers um, asked a question. I'm sorry. One of our Hoop group members on Facebook asked a question about centering. So I was like, I have so many projects going on right now that is in need of centering that I could pull out all of these projects and show you exactly what I go through my process to get all of my projects centered correctly. So tonight I have a hat. Um, I have hats that need to be done. And as you see, the camera's hanging there so that we can show you centering hats. I also have duffel bags that has a logo on it that needs to be centered. So we'll show you that. I have some shirts sitting off to the side. Shirts need to be done, so I'll show you some centering and dealing with that. And if we can come up with anything else that we need to center, we'll be centering that. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. So please sit tight, hang out with us, chill out, have a good time. Please, if you're here, jump in the chat, say hi. You know what I'm saying? Is this your first time being here tonight? Go ahead and let us know in the chat. Be like, I'm here. This is my first time. So that we can be like, hello, that's what's up, girl. Welcome. Or dude, that's what's up. That's what's up. We want you here. We want you to feel welcome. And if you have any questions, please post them in the chat box. We will try our best to get to them um, in the meanwhile of getting all of our stuff centered and put out here for you to see. So, let me get into the chat. One of the things I like to do here on this channel is I like to, oh, that's cool. I like to let folks know that I appreciate them being here with us this evening because, of course, you could be anywhere, and yet you chose to take time out of your busy schedule to hang out with me tonight, and I appreciate it. So we're going to say hi to everybody. It usually takes me about 10 minutes, unless there's a question or something like that. It may take a little bit longer, uh, but I promise you, around right about 9.20, 9.15, 9.20, we'll get into doing some centering projects so that you can see what that is all about. And now, the centering, keep in mind, the centering is universal, okay? So the same thing that applies in centering embroidery is the same thing that applies in centering DTF, rhinestones, sublimation, vinyl. I mean, centering is important to every bit of that. So you don't have to worry about, well, she's not talking about me. I don't do any of that. Um, if you're in garment decor at all, you center, okay? So you have to work on doing that. So we will talk about that this evening. So getting into the chat, Lori Campbell, hello, how are you? Welcome, my dear. Thank you for joining us this evening. Inspiration Creations from Canada. Another Lori from Canada. Welcome, Tanyu. Hey, Tanyu. How are you? Welcome. And Tanyu is a YouTube Hoop Group member, which we really appreciate our YouTube Hoop Group members because we have membership here and it supports the channel. And we are very grateful, very, very, very grateful for your support of this channel because we use those funds to you know, get our equipment set up and have cool things to work with here in the studio. So we definitely really thoroughly appreciate any and all support that you guys give. Dolores Grimes, hello, how are you? Miss Crafty Creations, hello from Albany, Georgia. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Isabel Morgan, welcome. Catlett, yes, Catlett, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Good evening to you as well. And I also meant to mention, if you're interested in joining the Who Group, there should be a link in the description below this video if you're able to get to it. Ms. Beverly Smith, hello, how are you and welcome. Thank you so very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Mary Brown, welcome. Ms. Leela Nelson's in the house. Thank you so very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Shirley Dabney, what is up? Hello, Shirley, how are you? Carbon Alvarado, hello from Cali, welcome and thank you 
very much for being a YouTube group member as well. Galena, hey girl, how are you? Welcome. The Sewing Brat, hey the Sewing Brat, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. She says, what's the purpose of Sew It Pro? Do I need to purchase Sew It Pro if I already have an editing software? I'm going to tell you no. You do not need to purchase Sew It Pro if you already have editing software that you love and enjoy and it works for you. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So what Pro is definitely an editing software program. Now, if you're looking to learn to digitize, that's not So What Pro. That would be in So Art. Or if you're looking for a more beefier digitizing program, that would be in Wilcom Hatch. Okay. So if you already have it, you don't need to buy it again. <laughs> Evelyn Evans, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Pearl Lucas and Lonnie Oliviera, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. EJ's daughter. Woo! Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening, and thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Uh, Sharon Edge Harley, good evening to you as well. Marge Campbell, Alvarine Campbell, Diana Henderson, Evelyn Evans, Shayna Krause. <laughs> welcome, Evelyn. Thank you so much for trying to let me know I was on mute, because y'all know I'm bad about coming up in here on mute. Crazy. Sam Sue Creates, hello. How are you? Welcome. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Mifflin43, hello, how are you? And thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Renee Boyd, hello, Lacey Morgan, hello, how are you? And I will pass that message along, Ms. Pearl Lucas, thank you very much. Simone Warren, hello, how are you? Welcome, and thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Uh, Stampin' Sue Create says that you need help with centering. Sweet. That's what we're here for is to help. I know sometimes we take for granted that, you know, centering is easy and you should be able to do it. But there are some challenges, and I'd like to show you some of my tips and tricks that I use to make it so much easier for me. Because what do I not like to do, y'all? Math! <laughs> I am not good at math at all. So to have some things to help make doing centering and math easier, it's a big help. So that's awesome sauce. Uh, Debbie D. Hey, Debbie D. How are you? Welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. 2011, Miss Max. Nope, you didn't lose us. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Ebony Clay T. Johnson from Delaware. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Portia Landon. First time seeing you live. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Jackie Maddox, yes, I am on tonight. It was running behind, like I said, trying to get my TVs worked out. And then, y'all, my baby, my, my 22-year-old daughter, the youngest girl, is going to Las Vegas for this week. And I'm not looking forward to, to it at all. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm going to be a nervous wreck the whole time she's gone. And she leaves Tuesday. So she, of course, comes in here and does what everybody does to us. And she's like, Mom. I need a luggage tag, and I'm sitting here like, why didn't we talk about a luggage tag last week? So earlier today, I've been scrambling, doing luggage tag. I did her a um, keychain. Ooh, I need to show y'all that keychain. That keychain is cute. I made her the little circle keychain with her monogram on it and the little tassel hanging from it. So that's what I was doing today and not setting up for the live tonight. So, yeah, that's crazy. Good thing I already knew what I was going to talk about. Um, let's see, uh, Shonda Coleman, hello, how are you, welcome, Tam Tam, Tracy Hall, welcome for the first time, thanks for being here, ma'am, and for speaking up, we really appreciate it, and definitely, like I said, you guys, if you ever have any questions, just shoot them in the chat, hey, Sheila Cushionberry, how are you, Lucy Lou, hello, how are you, Diane McCoy, welcome, thanks for joining us, and for being a YouTube Hoop Group member, I appreciate it. Uh, Miss Social Deb, thank you as well. Scooby-Doo, I am so glad you're feeling much better. Thank you for being here. And thank both of you, Scooby-Doo and Miss Social Deb, for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. We really appreciate it. Linda's, Linda Hamilton, hello. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Uh, let's see who we have. That everybody? Veronica Savage. I love that name. Oh, this is I think it's time for the bell because I just bought a Luminaire embroidery sewing machine from Brother. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is definitely time for the bell. And I know of another bell ring we're going to be doing tonight, too. So I'm excited for that one to show up as well. But for the time being, we still going to celebrate 
your luminaire, ma'am. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. <Holla. laughs> and those of you who ordered bells recently, who requested your free bell for being a YouTube Who Group member, those bells are finally packaged, y'all. We needed our labels, our little our little logo thingies. I don't make this stuff. So our little logos and stuff I have to order, and they finally came in. Oh, my God. I didn't want to send a naked bell. So I waited on those. We have our stickers. So we're going to be sending those out tomorrow. They're already packaged in their purple envelope, so be on the lookout for that. If you're interested and you're a Who, YouTube Who Group member here on the channel and you want a bell, just go to our website, thebabiesbooty.com. Somewhere on the middle, in the middle of the page, you should see a purple bell. Just click that, and you can fill it out. Let me know what your YouTube username is, what your name is here on the channel, and we'll verify that and get you a bell out in the mail. Holla! So let's see, Irene, let's see, that was that bell. Angelia Baker says, hi, Rook Deb Poy. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Haven't seen your name before, so welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, this Ethel Smith is here from Georgia. Thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Simone Langley as well is a YouTube Hoop Group member. Thank you very much. I appreciate that and the support. Um, Sheila Tushyberry says her nephew just got back from Las Vegas. Okay, so that makes me feel good. Somebody made it back safely. <laughs> so. I'm hoping we don't have any issues going out there to uh, Vegas. I was going to go with her, but I couldn't find any flights that I could afford. Like, oh, my God. So flights have gone back up again, I guess. So it's like, made me sad. Stampin' Sue Creates is going to Vegas for your daughter's wedding. Congratulations. That's awesome sauce. And I hope you have fun. The Sewing Brat said, I just got my new brother's 1634 DX Serger. Woo! Congratulations! Hello! <laughs> and Sue Creates, that's awesome sauce. Enjoy your serger. Make something real cute for me, girl, because when I tried to make something cute, it was not cute at all. Please, please make something for me. Because I just, just when you surge your next project, just be like, Eve, this is, this is for you because your serger didn't cooperate with you. And I'm going to be like, from somewhere. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to feel it in the air, girl. I'm going to feel it in the air. Congratulations on your surgery. <laughs> uh, PJ Coppage. Hello, Hoop Group family. Please bring the bell for me. I got an Elna 940 embrace. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. That's awesome. We like to do babies, y'all. Come on. Come on. More babies. More babies. I see somebody here. Oh, she finally said it. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Evelyn Evans, yes, I have. We working on that at some point in time. I just got to get settled and get things together, even though I really need to go ahead and just go on and do it, ma'am. Allison Holloway, hello. How are you? Welcome. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I saw it. Hey, Sally Rodriguez. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And Miss Andrea Ross got her new baby. She got the Stellar XE1, y'all. That big old awesome Yay! 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 <laughs> Yes, that's what's up. We love them new babies. Nick Nick Nurse, girl. Hello. How are you? Welcome. And I was like, oh, my God. I really need to get up with you. So let me know when you swing back through. I got your message. You said you were swinging back through. Let me know when that is. We need to actually schedule when you swing back through. I was going to come, and then I was like, yeah. So if it's on the schedule, I'm forced to do it, right? Right. So we're going to do this. I wanted to. My mind and my spirit was there, but my body was like, girl, why don't you sit your tail down somewhere? You'll be all right. She'll be all right. Just, you know, so that's why I didn't, like, reach out. I was like, yeah, I'm coming because I already knew how it was going to be. Y'all got to forgive me because sometimes it's just tough getting up out this house. <laughs> it's tough. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, let us see. Yvonne Hudson, hello. How are you from Cali? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. So let's get to centering because I'm caught up actually for a change. We're 15 minutes. No. Y'all, look, this stupid clock up here, that's the other reason I was late. I got a stupid clock right there that I bought off of Amazon, and it's supposed to be automatic, right? 
why did sucker say 9.15 and I'm looking at the clock on the computer, it's 9.21 and my phone say 9.21. I'm going to need that clock to get with the program because uh, it messes me up every single time. All right, so um, when we talk about censoring, censoring is so extremely important because there's nothing worse than for you to work on a project, work really hard, get it digitized, or get the bling pressed out, and it ends up being off-center. And if you are like me, I don't know why, but for some reason, I have it built inside my soul that I see things censored. Okay, it's right there, y'all. This is Miss Vegas herself, and I'm... Vegas! Catch me on the strip. I'm out, chill. We in these streets. Anyway, so censoring, you don't want it to be off center, but I have it built inside my soul where I can tell... I can walk into a doctor's office. I can walk into any building and immediately my eye goes straight to whatever painting or picture is crooked it drives me insane it could be off a millimeter and i can tell i don't know why i'm cursed with that it is so annoying and it affects my embroidery and my centering and my placement in my projects as well so i can see it and my husband and and a dear friend of mine I'm like, y'all, it's off center. And he's like, don't worry about it. They're not going to be able to tell. Only you can tell because that's how you are. And I'm like, Ugh. so if you have that too, then the centering is even more important to you. And so we have to find ways to get it done. Yeah, she's excited. We don't even, I'm going to bust up that ahead. So what we have, she's being 22. I'm going to need her to go back to being 10 because I just, I just can't, I can't with the adult energy. But at any rate, so the cool thing is <clears throat> most of our toys have things built into them to help us with centering. That's the really cool thing. So you can have an embroidery project that's already laid out, like, for instance, in Sew Up Pro. Please, when you get a project and you add it into Sew Up Pro, make sure it's centered in the program like it's supposed to be. Because what a lot of times you'll find is if your embroidery design isn't centered in your program, when you transfer it over to the machine, it's not going to be centered. So you'll center your project in the hoop on the machine, and then it's not centered when you stitch it out because it wasn't centered in the program. So that's step number one. Make sure your project is centered in the program, okay? Your step number two, oh, let me show you another example. It's more than just embroidery. That's what I'm telling you. It's really important to have everything the way it's supposed to be. And something else I want to let y'all know, too, is I have finally, y'all, finally, finally think pretty sure I got the hang of this DTF. So I know several requested McQuackens, but we'll get into that on a DTF day, but I wasn't ready to send out my questions because I just didn't understand why something was happening, but now I know. So here's another example of how something can be off-center. So I have my DTF program. It's a RIP software is what it's called. And I have my RIP software set to where whenever I print something out, it prints off offset by a quarter of an inch, I believe is what it is. So it automatically is going to start in the upper right-hand corner, drop down, it's supposed to be a quarter of an inch and over a quarter of an inch, and then start printing, right? That's great for when you're trying to fill up a page. But when you're trying to center a design, if I were to cut this DTF right here, because this is the top um, design, and then of course the second design is two. So if I were to cut it right here and lay it on the shirt, this is off center. See how the hand is closer to this edge than the rolling pin is to that edge. So what you'll find is you're trying to center it, but because it's off center on that paper, it throws your eye off and it makes it really difficult to try and center it. All right. So 
what I will end up doing, and I've, I've printed all of these out, and I'm going to have to go and do every last one of these, is I'm going to lay them out, measure what that distance is, and then measure that distance and cut the excess off so that when I cut these in half, I can just go ahead and press them to the shirt and they're centered, and it'll help me visually get it centered. So that's something else that, again, the centering is is all of the steps, all of the players involved, and a lot of times we, we don't think about it. And then, too, if I were to cut that just with a pair of scissors, imagine I can't cut super straight exactly with scissors. So that's why the cutting mat and the rolly is super important to make sure that that's set straight and then you cut it straight because, again, if you cut it crooked, it's going to look crooked when you try to put it on a garment or a hat or whatever it is that you're trying to put it on. So start with a, a design that is already centered to help you make this process a lot easier. All right. So I'm going to switch you over to right here on the ironing board. Hello, Shamira Customs. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> um, will you show how to center in Subway Pro? I sure will. I sure will. Um let me get you switched over to the ironing board because that's where we're going to work on the first project, which is going to be a duffel bag, okay? So let's get you over to here, and hopefully it will – let me get you slid up some as well so that we can get it all the way as close as we can to the end so that you can see what that's going to look like. So it's going to be upside down. I apologize, but to make sure that you guys could see accurately, I wanted to um, put the camera up here so that you could see it better. All right, so here are two bags. This one is blank, and what I'm going to do is show you how this works on the blank bag. But before I do that, I want you to see these are cheer bags, and here is the design for the cheer team that I worked with and the design is centered and what I generally do and I'm going to show it to you this way so that it makes sense before we flip it around upside down um, but what I generally do is measure first the up and down area that I have available so according to actually let's do it this way because that's pretty much how I do it so according to this ruler, I don't know how well you're able to see that, but according to this ruler, this is nine and a half inches tall. So that means four and a quarter. Let me make sure I'm saying that right. Four and a half. It's four and a half to make nine plus a quarter for that half down at the bottom. So we go to four and three quarters right here which is where the center of the bag is tip number one sorry technically it's tip number two because centering the design is tip number one but tip number two is to me perhaps the most important part of the whole process and that's having a good marking instrument okay i found this one um locally at a fabric wholesaler and I'm seriously considering getting these and offering them to the, to you guys because I haven't seen this anywhere else. I mean, it may be out there, but I don't I don't know where it would be. But this is a chalk, kind of a chalk, but maybe wax. I don't know. It's it's kind of like chalk, but it doesn't feel as soft as chalk. So here are two chalk um, instruments that I have already. So this one is pretty familiar at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or whatever. And this is a wheel. It has a rolly wheel at the bottom that lays down chalk as you roll it across the surface. And this one does as well. So this one I got from, I want to say Joann's, and it has a rolly wheel as well. It's kind of hard to see, but you just lay it against the surface and you roll it and it, as you see, leaves a mark uh, on your surface. Now that works for dark garments. For the most part, it does mark some. This yellow especially is kind of good to see on lighter garments. 
as well, but like this one is hard to see on light garments, but you barely can tell because that powder is a grayish color. That's where this one comes in that I thought was pretty darn cool because as you see in the top of it, it has multiple colors of chalk sticks in one pen. Kind of like you remember back in the day where the pen had green, blue, red, and black all in one pen, and you click it down to each one. Well, that's how this one works. So you turn the dial to the color that you want, and then you slide this down, and there is the color that you chose. So even if, you know, this is too dark or whatever, and I want to switch it to white, I just flip it and then slide it down and use the white. So I absolutely love this. Now, what I definitely rec recommend if you do something like this, check it. Do a spot test first. Please do a spot test. Because there's a number of ways of, of instruments that you can use to mark something, but you definitely need to make sure you can get rid of the marks later. All right, so with this bag, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I was able to use a piece of flannel with this and just rub it, and it takes the marks away. All right, because you can't see the line that I had right here. It would go actually a little bit above that bar um, in this particular design. So once I mark up and down at my four and three quarters, I put a little line here, and then I come and measure this way. All right, and this is seven inches. And so I find my halfway mark. I put it up against where that line was that I made from the up and down, and then I come across. And then after I'm done, I'll mark my center. Okay, so that's pretty much how this process works, and that's what we're getting ready to do. And the other reason I was showing it to you from this angle first is because this is on the ironing board, and as you see, it's wobbling, so I hope I don't make anybody sick. Um, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to mark this other bag. Before we do... I want y'all to know that this bag is a $30 bag, which I think is absolutely ridiculous, but I know why it's $30, because the people who sell this bag have exclusives to it, and you can't order it from China yourself or anywhere else, for that matter, but $30, and I messed up this bag. I messed up this embroidery, this absolute for the most part beautiful embroidery and I embroidered on the wrong side of the duffel bag I was rushing I wasn't paying attention the part with the label is the back so because I embroidered on the wrong side of the bag look I embroidered the baby's pocket clothes all right so as you see boo-boos are made all the time you have to be careful. You have to pay attention to little things to help make things easier. Had I been paying attention and known that that white label was right there, I would have known this was the wrong side of the bag. But as I mentioned, I was rushing. The lady was putting some pressure on me. And uh, so now I have to eat a $30 bag because that's just how I do things around here. If I mess up, I'm going to replace it. But that's my personal choice. You can have it in your, um, not code of ethics, but in your policies for your business. You can have it where the customer, you know, they're like, if, if anything happens that's wrong, then, you know, they, it's their loss no matter what. But to me, that kind of wasn't fair in this instance. All right, so here's the bag, and I'm going to check for comments here in a moment. But here's the bag. Um, and as I see, here's the white label right there on the back. So we're working on this side of the bag. And what I usually do is open it all the way up, press it all the way out, get all the creases and whatnot. And I'm, this is my exact method. I pull this bag right up onto the table, just like so. Let me back this up just a little itty bitty bit. All right, so I back it up on the table, and just like I showed you, I get my ruler, and I go up and down first. I don't know why. It just seems to work out for me like that. So like I said, nine and a half, so we're going to go four and three quarters. Got my, I don't, 
the I'm using this darker color because it's just light enough to see on here. That way, if I forget to rub it out, it's not garish or blatant, or if it doesn't rub out completely. So I like to use the darker color myself personally. So there's my little mark, and I, I can barely see it right there. And now I come this way, and I lay my ruler down, all right, right up against that line. And as I mentioned, this is seven, all right. I'm going to slide it over just a little bit to make sure that it's even. And three and a half for seven, I go up, and then I come across. All right, so that's how I center, mark for the center of my project, okay? So this particular bag is thick enough, and with those darn sequins, I don't use, um, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank, stabilizer. I do not use stabilizer with this bag, okay? So we're going to go ahead and hoop this bag just like I would hoop it if I was getting ready to do this bag. And I'm going to leave it hooped because I do still have to do this bag. All right, so here's my hoop. I love Mighty Hoops. I absolutely love these hoops, you guys. I swear, if you have a multi-needle machine, please invest in these. these they, they're a lifesaver, they're a time saver, and they let you hoop difficult things like this because I cannot hoop this um uh, top and bottom hoop with my regular hoops that go with this uh, machine. So the goal is to get this line centered on this particular hoop and then centered there with this line, right? So I'm going to slide it. Actually, this is the wrong hoop. Now that I think about it, let me not hoop it with this one. This one's too small for that design. I'm about to mess up. See, about to mess up with y'all on the camera. Oh, my goodness. We can't do that. Because these darn bags cost entirely too much money. I was sick as a dog when I realized I had to pay $30 for a stupid bag. But I'm going to try and take the stitches out and see if I can not save it. All right. This is the hoop that we're going to use. It's still Mighty Hoops. Uh, that hoop is the one that I use for their book bags. Because not only do we do duffel bags around here, we do book bags as well. And I embroider up here, and I do the same method up top that I do for the front of these duffels. You know, the marking aspect of it is a lifesaver. So here's the hoop that we use for this, and same principle applies. I'm going to try and get it centered here and here. And I don't need stabilizer with this bag. It may make it a little bit better with these sequins, but so what I try to do is eyeball from up top, going here and line it with the center. That's what I try to do because you can't see below this and you can't feel anything on the hoop. But here's where I cheat. All right, so here's my hoop and I'm going to put it on. Okay, so this is actually hooped now. But I just want to be sure that it's lined up where it's supposed to be. It seems like I did pretty darn good. Sometimes I get it right first try. And it seems like it's lined up here. But I double check. Why do I go through all of this? Because these kids are going to competitions. And there are other embroiderers out there with other cheer teams. And they can tell when stuff isn't right. So I go through the extra steps here just to be sure. So I lay this ruler across the center of that. A uh, hole on either side of this hoop. I make sure it's centered and I look at it. And now that I'm looking at this, it's not even. So this side is higher than this side. So this is all I do is I grab this and I tug a little bit. Okay. I pull it just a little bit to adjust this hoop and to get it where it slides some. Because I'm not using stabilizer, it helps. To be able to pull this thing. So I'm going to tug just a little bit more. Alright. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to check again. I only do it in little baby steps. Unless it's just way, way off. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, no, we can't. Alright, so looks like I tug just a little bit too much. But that's okay. Because I'm just going 
fact, just a little bit, itty bitty bitty bit, right here. And it's crazy because it doesn't look like it moves much, but it does. All right. Now, the cool thing with these bags is the centering, I'm sorry, the making it even, making it where it's supposed to be this way is more important than it being at the right distance down, up and down. And the reason for that is because we have room to play with that. That's not that big of a deal. But you don't want the design to be laying to the side. But if you want to be sure, you just do the exact same thing and come here to the center of those holes and make sure that it hits the center there. And so now we have a bag that's hooped and it's ready to go. It's centered. And now all I have to do is put it on the machine and center it on the machine. All right. So let's go ahead and show you real quick before we switch things over for the hat. So here, again, this machine has a laser. So the laser is helpful, but the laser isn't 100% smack dab dead on, okay? So what I like to do is, let's see what design is here. That's the wrong design, so let's get out of that. I'm going to load one of the designs that should be with this um Let's see, there, 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 there. All right. All right, so, actually, let me change frames just to be sure. All right. To make sure that this is even like it's supposed to be. Okay, so. According to what I'm looking at here with the laser, it's almost dead on, okay? It's off by a smidge. If I move it over, now according to this and the laser, it's dead on. But for me, I double check and I pull that foot down just to look and get a better vantage point just from having this pull down to see just how close it is and it looks pretty good okay so for this design that i've loaded with the kids name this particular bag it's ready to go all right so when it's time for me to actually go ahead and get this started i can press go and i don't have to worry about it so what i'm going to do with this is pull it off because i loaded a design that is not the right one and i'm going to set this off to the side because what I'll do is embroider that one tomorrow, and then we'll go from there. So let me switch you back over to me, and then we'll read the chat, and then we'll switch over to our um, hat. Oh, well, actually, we can switch over to doing Sew Up Pro and um, centering in Sew Up Pro, because let's see, Miss Johnson asked if I would show that. Um, let's see. Good evening, Shamira Customs. If I hadn't said that already, hello, Felicia Storms. Hello, Miss Crafty Creations. Ooh, she says she looks like your twin. If you see her father, you would understand why. And y'all, it's like he spit her out. They look so much alike. It's crazy. All right. Um, let's see. Hello, Dorothy Gaston and Marissa Dandridge. Hello, hello. Diamond Boutique. Hello, hello. Um, she says, I have something similar to the purple one you have. It came with five different colored chalk, Shamira Custom says. Where did you, oh, you got it from Walmart. Okay, so definitely check Walmart. Walmart may have it. Um, just in case, I will see if I can't get them myself. And Scooby-Doo, I'm pretty sure I saw them have refills there. So it looks like you can because it looks like a lead pencil. So we'll definitely check that out. Um, I hope I can get there this week, and if so, I'll let you know for sure. Uh, Sisters United by Love. I didn't say the name of it because it's like you have to have a uh, a corporate account of some sort, but the name of the place is, um, oh, my gosh, I just drew a blank. Faust. Uh, is it Faust te Textiles? I think it's Faust Textiles. I'll look it up real quick just to be 100% sure, but it's not very far from me at all. Um, 
Allison Holloway, thank you. Holloway, I'm not sure where I got. I think I got that from Walmart. I'm not sure. What sizes of Mighty Hoop would I recommend? Definitely five and a half square uh, because that's like the most common for left chest logos. Um, and it is the easiest um, hoop to use for doing left chest logos. Um, and then aside from that, I would suggest what go with whatever your main embroidery projects generally involve. So for me, like doing those duffel bags, um, and I do a specific jacket bag, so I had to get the long uh, embroidery hoop, which I think is something like 13 inches long by like 4 inches why as a matter of fact it might even be three and a half um but you purchase the hoops based on what you normally do now of course you will come across certain situations where you will end up needing to buy hoops again because you get a project from a specific customer and you find out hey i need a bigger hoop like for instance um one of my other customers likes to do the blankets big blankets and she wants huge names on the blankets so i had to get the biggest mighty hoop I could get with my machine whereas before I didn't need it and I don't use it except for when she calls so it just depends um, on what you're doing Amethyst Parker said those pins are on Amazon that's awesome because I haven't seen them there so I don't know what they will be called I guess multi-chart um, marker uh, not marker multi-chart multi-chalk <laughs> uh, I guess marker I don't know we'll have to see um, hey, Gail Moore, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, and let's see. I'm not sure. Not sure. Oh, okay. So... Miss Avery Head, if you're in here, I don't, I'm not understanding your message. <laughs> I don't understand your message, uh, but we'll have to get with that a little bit later, I suppose. Hello, Adele L. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Leela Nelson, I have a harder time hooping with the Mighty Hoops than the regular hoops. Oh, no. Why is that? Don't let it be harder. Let me, I actually, let me see. Do you have the can't get the hooping tight enough with t-shirts? Okay, so t-shirts is a horse of a different color. T-shirts are a horse of a completely different color. Color. T-shirts are stretchy. So the mighty hoops, you can use them with stretchy material, but I would definitely use a fusible stabilizer with the t-shirt instead of using regular cutaway stabilizer. So if you find a fusible cutaway stabilizer, use that instead of using regular stabilizer, and you won't have to worry so much about it because what happens is your, your most important thing you need when it comes to doing T-shirts is keeping it from stretching, of course, because if it stretches any, that's the possibility for it to pucker. So to keep that shirt from stretching, you fuse the stabilizer to the back of the shirt, it can't move because the stabilizer is not going to give, so the shirt won't give. It'll stay flat, nice and flat in that one position. Then once you do your embroidery, you take it out of the hoop and then you peel it up around the edges of it, of the embroidery design, and trim that extra. So the only thing that's fused is what's up under the actual embroidery. So if you want to still use your Mighty Hoops and give it another shot, definitely fuse your stabilizer to the back of your T-shirts. And that works even if you're doing it with the regular hoops, too, because that fused uh, stabilizer will keep it from stretching at all. Um, thank you, Scooby-Doo. I will do that here. Get it together now. Um, hello, Miss Amethyst Parker. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Did I say hey to Miss Willie Roseman? I'm not sure. Hello, how are you? Reese 417, when your daughter hijacked your live, love that she made my night. Don't hype her head up, please. Please don't hype her head up. I swear, it's just crazy. Kimberly Diaz, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I know I blind es poquito espanol, but I know what you just said. <laughs> hey, Deborah Harris, Neil, Miss D. Purple One, Joanna Holmes. 
Hello, how are you all? Thank you for joining us. Um, Simone Langley is letting us know there's a sale on Omar Crafty Supplies, 10 cent embroidery designs that we can center. So definitely check that out. Amethyst Parker says, search for Sullivan's Multi-Mark 6-in-1 Water Soluble Marking Pencil in blue or purple. Oh, now they do have the, oh, the color of the pen itself is um, blue or purple. Okay, cool beans. You fuse the knit interfacing to the t-shirts first and then use the cutaway. I did get some fusible stabilizer the other day as well. Okay, so have you used the fusible... That's the interfacing, though. So have you used the fusible cutaway? Because if you use fusible cutaway, you shouldn't have to need the fusible interfacing unless that's a part of you making the shirt itself. So see if using the fusible stabilizer makes the difference for you. Um, so let, let me pull up Sew so It Pro, and then we'll work on getting in a design. Nick Nick Nurse, can you put the camera on the hoop frame when releasing the project? Having problems releasing my frame. I think it's the nails. You mean releasing the project from the machine? We can do that. That's not an issue. But I want to make sure what you're asking for. Actually, let me move this so I can see it once I switch. Okay. Yes, okay. All right, so what I want to do, switch you guys over. I'll play with it this week and see how it works. Let me know how that turns out for you. But that should make the difference. Now, do you have, you have the hooping station too, right? I want to make sure of that as well. Because if not, then there's another thing you can use to help keep your project stable in the hoop while getting those magnets to fit if you don't have the hooping station. Okay, that's what we're looking for. All right, so wait a minute. Let's do this one. Nope. No, I was right with that one. I didn't realize that was that large. Actually, I'm going to take me off altogether. Okay, so here is um, a project that as I showed you, this is the type of design that goes on the girls' book bags. And you see it's off-center. So I saved this design just now, um, bag to DST. I saved it just where it's sitting right now in the hoop, okay? You don't have the hooping station. Okay, I'll show you the little bracket thing that they sell and you can check your hoops to see if they have the little bracket that fits your hoop because they have the brackets match the hoop. So I'll show you that here in a minute. So I saved that and closed it out. So let's go to open that design back up. And here it is, Aaliyah Bag 2. Now here's the first one, the original, but here is two. Let's actually open up the original first. Here is the original right here and as you see it's centered so what we use to center our designs in so what pro are the black boxes okay so each of these little black boxes here in this corner there are some in the middle here on either side as well you just match it up with these crossbars if you don't see your crossbars then you go to view and here are all of your uh windows and labels and stuff so you can take the lines off, and of course, it's going to be much harder to center your design if the grid is off. But you can turn the grid on right here, okay? So there's that one. Let's open up the other one that I saved out the way, and it centered it for us. That's amazing. Didn't expect that to happen. So that's new. That must be something they've updated in the program. Because usually when you save it off-center, it doesn't center it. 
So just double check that before you actually send it to your embroidery machine. Double check the design before you send it over. Now, another thing that they do have in the program is go to tools, up at the top, tools, and then center pattern, alternate C. And that will automatically center it for you, too, which that's something I'm pretty sure they just added. I don't remember seeing that before. So that can also automatically center your design for you. So that's how you center in Sew It Pro. It's not super difficult. It's just uh, making sure that you have, you know, all of the players to the game uh, in here just to make sure that it's right. But the easiest hands down is tools and center pattern, and it pops it right there to the middle for you. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, and you'll be able to get your uh, design centered fairly easily from now on in um, Sew It Pro. Love Sew It Pro. All right, so that is centering in the software program, um, showing you the, um, I don't know how close I can zoom in. Let me see how well I can zoom in on uh, that camera so that you can see. But generally, I just kind of like, lift up and tug just a little bit in order to get that um off of the pro off of the do flashy. Let me see. Let's try. I haven't tried this before. Um blowing it up. Um, there we go. So let's see if this works. Oh that works a little bit. Okay. Alright, so here is the arms here are the arms and I'll put it back on one of the things that I failed to remember with this particular uh, machine and these arms is there's a notch under this one a little little notch under this metal flap that helps you make sure that the hoop goes on one way, okay? And that's that notch right there. So you have to make sure when you're hooping, uh, loading your project, make sure that you feel it click with that notch. And it, it took me a while to get used to it too. And that's also what these little uh, cutouts are for here as well on this hoop is for these two to nest down in there, right? So even with a bag as heavy as this one, you hear it click, you want to make sure you, you get it clicked in and, you know, give a little tug, make sure that you can't just easily snatch it out, all right? So when it's time for me to take this project off of the hoop, no matter what hoop I'm using, whether it's the Mighty Hoop, whether it's the hoops that came with the machine, I kind of just hold it here and lift up. You see how I'm lifting up and the little arms are coming up with it? I lift up and then pull out. That's how I take it off of the machine. Okay, so you just slide it forward. Make sure that it clicks in place. Sometimes it clicks, sometimes it doesn't, depending upon how I put it on, but usually it clicks. And then, like I said, just lift up a little bit and pull off. And just that easily it comes off of the machine. Let's go to, let's see... Here's another hoop. As you see, the indentation is over here. It's not over there. So this one is upside down. Okay? So we want to slide it in and click it on the machine. And you want to make sure, like this one, it doesn't look like it's all the way in. See how it's sliding out? It's not supposed to. So... There is a way, if you're having trouble with that, like how this one isn't wanting to click all the way in place, you can um, adjust this arm to slide it back a little bit. So you just loosen these two screws and just kind of ever so slightly push it back just a little bit so that you make sure this fits down in the recess on both sides. Okay, so the machine is fully adjustable. That doesn't look upside down. These arms are on wrong, I think. No, yes, no, I don't know. I'll look at that later. 
But at any rate, that's how I take my uh, project on and off of the machine. Now, what we're going to do is work on centering a hat. So in order to do a hat on this machine, we have to take these arms off. So I'm going to take the arms off, and it takes a um, Allen wrench in order to do that. All right, and it's pretty tight fit. There's one arm there. And I'm going to take this arm off here. So you guys get to see me switch over and add the uh, hat hoop on here, which is pretty cool. All right. So there's the second arm. I didn't loosen it enough, so that's why I had to wiggle it. All right. So I'm going to set my arms over here. And now I'm going to grab, I store my... Um, I store my hat hoop under my embroidery machine. I'm sorry, I'm trying to zoom back out in a way so that you can see a little bit more, I think. Okay. All right, so let's get the hat hoop. Okay. Sorry, cap driver. I'm calling it the wrong thing. All right. So here is my cap driver. I need to turn it right side up. And then slide it onto the machine. And there's a groove in there. That's, this area is where the arm of the machine slides up into. Okay. All right, so once it gl if it glides smooth, you know it's on, and that's where it's supposed to be. And then there are two screws that I'm going to have to tighten down. So I always uh, push them back in a little bit so that I don't lose the screws. So I'm going to have to raise those up. All right. And... Now that that's on, we lock it down, screw it down rather, and now we can put a hat on the embroidery machine. Okay. Now, when you use the hat hoop, um, the cap driver and the hat hoop, I don't trust the laser at all because the way the hat is made and it's up off of the surface of the needle plate by a significant margin, it tends to uh, throw off the laser. So I don't use the laser um, at all when it comes to putting the hat hoops on. Okay? So I have a hat here, but I'm going to take it off and switch hats. I'm going to hoop one, and I don't have, I'm, I can turn the camera now that I think about it. So with hats, you have, usually, usually, you have with your basic cap, this is a structured cap, you have panels, okay? And these panels are what we use to center your hat. So no matter what design you're doing, use this to center your design on your embroidery machine, right? So let's see if I can twist this a little bit. A little bit? No, yes. A little bit. Okay. So I'm going to hoop this hat. This is my hat hoop. And I would slide the camera over, but I want to make sure it stays on the red line because we'll be doing more over there than I am hooping hats. Because I'm only just going to hoop this one. Okay. And there is a line on the hat hoop. And all I do is just look and try and gauge the best that I can that that line is lined up 
with the line on the metal surface of that hat hoop. And then I come around and clamp this hat down across the brim. And when you lock it down, sometimes the hat will shift with it locking down, so I always look and hold it. And that's my hat hooped and ready to go on the embroidery machine, all right? So now that I have my hat hooped, again, this is what I want to center my design based on, okay? So let's go ahead and put this on the machine. And I'm not going to actually load a design because you should be able to kind of, oh, well, I guess you didn't see none of that I was showing you. That's crazy. Let's take it back off. Sorry, I forgot I twisted the thing. Um, Let's go back right here and back down to there. All right, now, sorry. So, again, here's the hat hoop ready to go and this is the center seam that we want to make sure that our design is lined up with so we'll go ahead and put this hat back on the machine and I'm not again I'm not going to load a design because I don't have to to show what I'm talking about so I don't know how well you can see that laser line but here is that center seam you see where that laser line is it's way over there so this isn't lined up centered but if I push the hat down and make sure that that hat is flat up against the throat plate, notice the laser moved and now it's on the center seam. So because of the hat being up off, it throws the laser off. So you can't go based off of the laser. You just can't. How do we go? We use it based off of the needle. Remember I showed you I pull that pressure foot down and I pull it down just to see where that needle strikes. And it's just barely off. So I'm going to adjust it a little bit. Whoops, wrong way. My machine's beeping at me because it's saying I got a design that's too big on here. But technically I don't have a design because I don't have it loaded. But So you just move it until you see that needle line up with that center line. And then you're ready to go. Well, actually, you kind of need to check and make sure that it's down far enough as well, but that depends on the design that you're using. But that's how I center my hat on this machine, and that's how you center it even on a single needle machine. You don't have to, I didn't, I didn't use that laser. I used the foot. You bring that foot down and see where that needle will hit on the hat, and that's how you get your center mark for your hat, Okay. Now, if you don't have a panel, a, a seam right here, like if you got a flat front, then you'll have to measure from one seam on one side over to the other, mark your center, and do the exact same process as if you had a seam on your hat. Okay? So that's a hat and centering on a hat. So we've done a duffel bag and we've done a um, hat. Galena, no, it's not. It's just the sensor that um, it's the sensor that I can read with my phone and tell me what my sugar is, which unfortunately is always high, but that's a horse of a different color. We don't want to talk about that. All right, so let's see. But, yeah, no, no worries. You can always ask about that. It's, it's, a, um, it's just a sensor. Um, hello, Catherine Brown. How are you? Oh, I think I said hi, but that's okay. Um, let's see. Had to get new brackets. Christian said he had to adjust them. Yes. So, like I said, I mean, I'm not sure how they would need to be adjusted. Some things you can't adjust yourself, um, but it is better to have the expert do the adjustments. And Christian is totally awesome. He's like, the guru of red line. Uh, but haven't ventured into using the hat hoop yet. Intimidating. It can be, but it once you get the hang of it, you'll throw hoops on, uh, throw hats on. And I tell you, I've had orders of hundred or so hats, and it's cool because it comes with two hat hoops. So while one is stitching, I got the other one hoop ready to go. Soon as that one's done, snatch the thing off of the stand, put it on the thing, press go, 
take the other one, take the hat off, put the hat back on the stand, hoop another hat. That hat is sitting there while I'm cutting jump stitches if I have any trimming up, doing all the cleanup on that hat. Wow, that one is stitching. I love it. It's just like boom, 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 just hats back and forth. I love that industrial machine. It's like the bee's knees when it comes to processing huge orders in and out. I absolutely love it. Uh, what is the stitch size on the cap? What do you mean the stitch size on the cap? Uh, Elizabeth Rathburn, you got your new PEA 100 in hat in house now. Need to try a hat on it. Yes, you do, girl. Congratulations on your PEA, honey. <laughs> Congratulations, Elizabeth. That's what's up. PEA 100 is a pretty baby. That's a pretty baby. Um, I have an Innovis NQ1600E. Can you hoop a hat on that type of embroidery machine? I so want to try a hat, but I am not sure it has a hat hoop. Um, hey, Vivian Crosby, how are you? Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Let me really quick make sure you're welcome, Knickknack Nurse. Um, hey, Teresa Spencer, how are you? Welcome. I was just talking about your area, your neck of the woods. I was just talking about that baby. Um, it is convenient, Galena, uh, very much so, because I don't like to do the finger stick at all, so it's very convenient. It's in for 14 days, and all I do is scan it with the phone. I was being facetious about my sugar levels, because that's the reason I have the darn thing, because my sugar is kind of uncontrolled, for lack of better words, but that's a, that's what we don't want to talk about, uncontrolled sugar. <laughs> do you need to clip the back of the hat? No. What do you, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean clip the back of the hat? You mean after it stitches and do the stitches on the back side of the embroidery? Or you mean clip it with clips on the sides? Because if you're talking about clips on the sides, you don't have to. Not with that. I mean, you can, but I haven't, I haven't had a need to do so yet. But you can. Um, especially for the more floppy hats. The hats I'm using are structured in most instances my hats are structured so they don't like flop around a whole lot so i don't have to stabilize them like that what's a good price to charge for a hat it depends on what type of embroidery you're doing on the hat so if you're doing something simple like uh the logo i did on that hat over there um you can do it based on stitch count but do an upcharge of some dollars to help offset the fact that you're doing something additional like uh, the hooping is completely different and the work up of embroidering on a hat is completely different so it's not as simple as hooping a shirt and stitching and you're done you have to do a little bit more leg room and a little bit more work with a hat so i would charge a little bit more for a hat but the going rate at the hat store, they charge 25 bucks to do a darn hat, and that's simple embroidery. But if you're doing puff or something like that, it's way more because that's a specialty item. Um, so back to Sisters United by Love. I apologize. I got away from it, but my brain was working on something else. So I don't think I have it in here. Um, or do I? Yes, I do. I brought it upstairs. Oh, my God. It's so heavy. I don't see the other part to it, though. Oh, wait a minute. There is no other part. Okay, so this is a hat hoop that I got off of Amazon. Um, and this may not work as well, and I'll show you why, as far as with this hat. Okay. So this is a hat hoop, and the way it's made to work is if your machine is 5x7, I don't know if your machine is 5x7 or not, but I'm going to grab a 5x7 hoop because I don't see my 4x4 for the uh, 4x4 machine. So this is the 5x7 hoop, and no, this is made for 4x4. See, it's too big. So if you get your 4x4 hoop that came with your machine, this should nest into your your hoop, and you can clip it on with this this side back here. 
it's been a long time since I've used it, so obviously I'm out of out of practice with it. But you clip it on right in here where this is. You screw it down. See how that's moving down, All right? And then you use it to clip it on. I think it's this side of the hoop. Now, keep in mind, it's supposed to be a 4x4 four four hoop, but you clip it on that side, and you screw it down, and technically, you're not supposed to do this until after you've already hooped the hat, but we're putting carts before horses all the time around here. So, okay, so this is how it will fit in your 4x4 four four hoop, not in your 5x7, even though it looks like it can still work, right? So, you can use sticky stabilizer right here uh, to help hold your hat down. Okay, so the reason why you want to help hold the hat down is this part up here is going to hold the brim of the hat. So let's take this hat, and I'm going to take the um, cardboard structure holder out of the hat. All right, I throw that off to the side. And the way this hat hoop is supposed to work, okay, is you're supposed to take this bill and put it down under this flap, right? So I'm going to have to screw this out a little bit more so it'll stand up some more. And I may have to flatten this. Get it to flat some. Okay. There we go. And then you feed this down. Now you may have to mark the center of this. Right, to try and make sure that this hat is centered because right now it's so not centered that it's horrible actually. A little bit better. Oh. Uh. Okay. We're going to make that work. Okay, so you slide it all the way down. Okay. And then you twist this to tighten it down if it's not already tight to hold the hat in place. And then with the sticky saber back here, sticky stabilizer, you can flatten. Actually, sorry, you were supposed to um, pull this under as well and try and clamp that under with the brim of the hat. However, I digress. What you want to do is flatten this as much as you possibly can up against the sticky stabilizer. Okay, so I didn't tighten it down good enough because it's flopping around in this thing. If we can't tighten this sucker down, come on, making me work for the for the gram. Okay, so you'll flatten it out. Now, notice earlier I said this may not work well with this hat hoop, and the reason why is because this is structured. So there's extra uh, oomph in the buckram of this hat, and so what it does is it makes it stiff. So it's not wanting to lay flat like I needed to in order to embroider on the flatbed single needle machine. But as you see, you know, kind of like forcing it, it still doesn't flatten out nice and smooth like it probably should. It looks a hot fool mess personally, but this is, you know, probably about as good as we'll get as, as flattened. I don't know. With sticky stabilizer, it'll help hold it down on this backside a little bit better. But... With the single needle machines, you really want to reach for using the non-structured hat. So go to Walmart, um, or you can find dad caps usually are not structured. And those kind of are squishy and floppy, and it'll lay flat much better than these structured hats will. And you can use this with your 5x7 or your 4x4 embroidery machine to embroider on hats. And actually, to a certain degree, you can embroider a much larger space by using this method then uh well not with that machine but with the six needle brother machine so you know keep that in mind um you should this is this is kind of what your hat hoop will look like i think dirty has one as well for the five by seven embroidery machine so you can check out the dirty d-u-r-k-e-e -E, hat hoop and it looks like my um Streaming is going to act up. I hope not, but we'll see how it goes. So that's a hat hoop option for you, like I said, or Durkee, D-U-R-K-E-E. -E. Simone Warren says she got one of those from Amazon. Gail Moore, I have a 4x4, and I used the hoop for the first time, and with the help you gave, 
it really worked. That is awesome. Thank you very much. Um, EJ's daughter, I know you have a video of doing a hat on a 4x4. We'd love to see you do one on a 5x7 single needle. Yeah, we do need to revisit it because it's been a while since I've done that video. So, yes, we definitely um, can work on that. Um, let's see. Where can I purchase the fusible cutaway stabilizer? Oh, uh, let's see. Hey, Sonia Siegler, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Let me check one of my, let's see. I don't think they have it, but I'm going to check anyways. And if they don't, I'll check the other place. Let's go here. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. I was wrong. Okay. So we can go to here. No, not there. What in the world? Where is my oh the sorry y'all. Let me switch the screen like this. And then I should be able to bring y'all over. Uh, there we go. So now let's go here. Boop. And we will. Oh. So here is Metro EMB. MetroEMB.com. And I'll drop it in the um, comment section. Metro EMB, you would want to click on Stabilizer. Okay. Then you want to click on Cutaway. Because I don't think they have a fusible tearaway. Um, we'll check. I don't think they make a fusible tearaway, but we'll check and see. But definitely um, cutaway, fusible cutaway. And here they have large rolls, like this is a 50-yard roll, which is huge. And I'll have to, because I don't think Will sells fusible either. Um, if he was in here, I would ask. But here is a poly mesh cross-stretch fusible 14 inch by 50 uh, grams thickness for 34.95 here. So they do have a fusible at metroemb.com. Let's see if they have a tearaway at fusible. I don't think so. Let's see all of the tearaway. This is cross stretch fusible. I don't think this is not the same thing because it doesn't say tearaway, so no. Um, I do not see a fusible stabilizer. Now, another one I like to refer people to is allstitch.com. Allstitch is really awesome sauce too. Backings and toppings. And then we want to click on cutaway stabilizers. All right. And then here on the side, you can click fusible. And they have one sheer stretch, sheer stitch, fusible poly mesh. Plus no cutaway, no show cutaway embroidery backing in white. So they do have it at allstitch.com as well. Theirs is, let's see how many yards or how much you get. Do you see the size on here? I don't see. The, oh, here we go. Eight inch roll by ten yards is thirteen ninety two. If you want to go to the twelve inch roll, ten yards seventeen seventy three, and of course you can go up to three hundred yards with these people, or you can do the twenty inch roll and go up to two hundred yards for that. Okay. If I could remember where I got my black cutaway from, I'd tell you where I got uh, fusible, I, but I don't remember where the heck I got that from, um, so I can't help with that. But um, Also, with their backings and toppings, they also have cover a stitch, which is the soft stuff that goes on the back of embroidery uh, for baby skin, and they also have the kind that's waterproof. So if you wanted to embroider on a raincoat, for instance, and then you put that on the back, it'll waterproof those stitches. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So there's that. We can, uh, let me make sure. I don't have any questions because I said, okay, we got a bag. Oh, a shirt. 
we can enter a shirt and be able to show you the conundrum that you're up against when it's cut crooked the um transfer uh, I got a mighty hoop 8 by 9 centered my design and so it pro but when I loaded the design the needle wasn't centered and it wouldn't let me move the needle over enough excitement T what machine do you have um, if you have the mighty hoop 8 by 9 then you have a large machine so do you have the uh, which multi needle do you have because one one of the things I've learned because that's what I had to do with that machine when I first went over and put the bag on the machine I don't know if you noticed but when I first put the bag on the machine I said let me change the hoop okay the reason why I needed to change the hoop is because the machine was still set for the last design and the and the book bag that I had hooped um which was the last thing I embroidered so it was situated the wrong in the wrong place for the new design that I was putting in. So what I've learned is whenever you, like for instance, if I'm doing those duffel bags back to back to back to back to back, then I don't usually change the hoop because I may have to move it over the smidge, move it this way a smidge, up or down a smidge. I usually don't have to move it large distances, right? But if I switch projects from the duffel bag to the book bag, what I do is I change the hoop on the red line so that it will reset the machine and recenter the orientation of the machine based on whatever hoop. I always use the biggest size hoop because it's just easier, and I always check my borders. So it doesn't matter what hoop I put on the machine, I always use the larger size. But you still need to reset the machine to have it centered on the um, – put it at the center point so that no matter what hoop you put on, it'll be in the center like it's supposed to be. So that could be the reason why. Just reset your hoops or reset the machine. Sometimes even on the six needle, I just cut it off and cut it back on and make it reset itself back to its original centered position. And then you should be able to move your design around however you need to do it. Brother, six needle, okay. So I just usually cut it off, cut it back on, make it reset itself then see if you can use your 8x9 and it be centered where it's supposed to be. See if that helps. Colette says, what's the largest design you can put on the cap using the red line machine? Can it stitch ear to ear without rehooping? From what I understand, Colette, it is an ear to ear uh, embroidery. Have I tried it yet? No, because... I mean, I don't mind doing hats and I'm okay doing hats, but... I'm just, I don't wear hats like that, so I haven't tried. I guess we could try at some point in time. If I had a, um extra hat up here, these hats are for order, so I can't try it on these. But if I had a hat, I would try it. But I've seen me rotate the hat a good way, so I'm pretty sure you can. Um, I think we can look it up. I'll try and look it up and see before we're finished. I purchased my caps from um, two places either my local warehouse, which is carolinamade.com. Actually, let me put, hold on. Let me put metroemv.com in the chat first, and then we'll do allstitch.com. That is for um, stabilizers, fusible. And then Carolina Made in Indian Trail. Okay, so the thing with Carolina Made, though, you have to have an account with them in order to order hats. So when I'm in a rush or if they're out of a specific hat, usually I go to buckwholesale.com. They have the most affordable hats that I've found, and a lot of times they have a sale. So check out Buck Wholesale, and they have pretty decent hats, too. So you can give them a shot. Um, let's see. Hey, sweet mama bird. How are you? Welcome. Sorry I missed your uh, howdy do. Um, let's see. Colette, on my brother's 650, I can only do about two by four design. What's the maximum design size you can stitch using red line? Okay, sorry. That's the same 
question that you asked. On your brother 650, you can only do a two by four. What do you mean two two by four on your 650? Now, brother does have, well, actually it's more than brother because red line, Tajima, they're all restricted to 60, 60 millimeters. Hold on. Yeah, 60 millimeters. They're restricted because if you go too high or too low, it'll stitch in parts of the hat that you really don't want to stitch on. There is a way around it if you have a multi-needle machine. There's a way around that where you can go bigger, all right? Um, The single-needle machines, because you can lay the hat flat, That allows you, because you can even, um, you don't have to have this hat hoop contraption to embroider a hoop, um, embroider a hat, rather, on your single needle machines. You can use the 4x4, you can use your 5x7, but use sticky stabilizer and smush the hat to the sticky stabilizer to keep it in place while you you embroider on it, and you can embroider bigger. Um, on hats that way I've seen that people do it all the time but with the multi-needle machines even like I said Tajima all of them are restricted to that 60 inches tall right so let's see if I can't oh man see if I can't show you the hoop that works with um the machine, and it even works with brother machines. There we go. Okay, so this... No, there we go. Is not what I'm trying to look for. Hold on. When you got multiple screens, that's where you just, and you, oh, you're you not used to doing all this back and forth. Okay. So here is, oh, God, not 10% off. Boom. Gen 2 by Hoop Tech. H-O-O-P-T-E-C-H. Hoop Tech. They have this frame that is an aftermarket frame, meaning it's not made specifically for um, our machines, like it's not native to our machines, but it can work with our machines. And they even have a little bracket to help with the six needle and allow you to embroider, as you see, supposedly all of this. All right. I don't have a hoop tech hat hoop, so I can't confirm nor deny, but I've seen this hat hoop in one of my embroidery accessory stores and it's there and I've seen it so I don't see why I mean they can't sell it if it didn't work and as you see it also allows you to embroider on visors but of course it comes at you know a significant price because this is the price of the hoop but there's also a frame that goes with it so they want you to get the uh framing gauge this contraption as well to allow you like you saw i have a framing station for the red line hat hoop well this is the framing station for their hat hoop okay so this is 400 and the cap frame is because it's, it'll be difficult for you to hoop a hat with this in the air you it needs to attach to a frame um stand thing to help you you know you will need to purchase a t-bar framing gauge if this is your first gen 2 piece so you need the framing thing and this is 350 so 650 for both and as i mentioned if you're doing full productions of hats back to back you really need two of these frames you really do oh well you don't need but it would be very advantageous to have two of those frames 
So that can help if you have the multi-needle machine. Of course, if you have the single needle machine, this doesn't even apply to your equipment. It, it won't work. So um, where are you? Let's get our chat back so that I can make sure I'm not missing questions. All right, so let's see. Have you ever had to deal, okay, Red Roses 501. Have you ever had to deal with a weird stitch on a hat or a little, little thread tail that's worrisome? Um, I mean, I, unfortunately, we deal with rogue stitches all the time. Um, hats are notorious for having retarded stitching because the problem is if you ever notice the embroidery hoops and how they work with the embroidery machine the whole point in this hoop is to hold the fabric stable for you along with the stabilizer to hold the fabric in place while this frame moves around on the bed of the machine or on the arm of the machine and it stitches so as long as this is flat against your machine or against the arm of the machine while it's embroidering, you shouldn't have any registration issues. You shouldn't have what's called flagging. And that's when the frame bounces up and down. A lot of times you'll see flagging with those single needle small home machines when you're embroidering on something that's thick for, or in a, in a way almost too thick for those smaller machines. You'll see that flagging. It'll bounce up and down. That's not good for the embroidery machine, and that's where a lot of needle breaks will come from because what happens is while this is flexing and moving around up and down, it's bending, so it causes the needle to bend with it as it goes in or out of the fabric, and it can cause the needle to hit the needle plate or the bobbin case and break the needle, okay? So you don't want movement. You want it to lay flat up against the embroidery machine. Well, the problem with hats is, especially the structured hats, when you're hooping them, they don't lay flat up against the machine, up against the arm. It's kind of like up in the air a little bit. So remember what I said about the flat hoop flagging, it can bend the needle. Well, the same principle applies with these hats. Because it's up in the air some, it's not resting against the machine like it's supposed to, that throat plate it's going to flag some. So there's a lot of registration issues that can happen with these hats. That Gen 2 frame is supposed to eliminate that issue um, because it holds the whole hat supposedly stable to keep that from happening. Um, but even with the red line, um, any of these embroidery machines, the 6 needle, the 10 needle, the red line, you should be able to adjust the hat frame to get it as you want this hat to be as close as possible to that needle plate to keep from breaking your needle that's you know you don't want any movement with these things so if you're stitching out hats and they're not turning out as well as you would like like I personally don't 100% like the way mine are turning out um, but I've adjusted my machine and I think I just need to adjust it again to get it as low as possible to uh, the throat plate of the embroidery machine because the more movement you have, the worse the embroidery is going to turn out. All right, so um, those little worrisome weird stitches and stuff, they're going to be there, unfortunately. Um, if what I would say is check, like, for instance, if it is a um, order, like those duffel bags. I've stitched that a zillion times, it seems. So if I go to stitch it again and say there's a, a the registration is off and where it does the foundation stitches, if that's showing on the outside just a little bit from the regular embroidery, something's wrong because it stitched just fine all the way up until this particular bag. Now with this particular bag, it's stitching crazy. It's got weird stitches. What what gives? Why is it doing that? So when that type thing happens, I know it's time to change your change my needle. It's time to check my bobbin. Um, maybe rethread the bobbin. Maybe the bobbin is about to run out, so I put a new bobbin in. 
um, I'll dust out or get get the brush and brush out the bobbin case area where the um, inside the arm of the machine. I'll clean all that out. Um, make sure there are no stray threads caught up in there. Uh, the whole nine. I'll go through and just check all of that because usually. If you've been stitching all along just fine, the exact same design for the most part, and now all of a sudden there's issues, usually there's something wrong. A stray thread. In the case of those darn bags, a sequin piece came off and got stuck in there or something like that. There's always something. It's not usually you. It's usually something. So you need to check. Read thread to thread. The whole, just go through the routine and see if that eliminates the problem. In most instances, changing the needle, checking your bobbin, putting in a fresh bobbin if it's almost out, um, dusting out the machine and re-threading the top just to be sure that nothing came out the tracks, usually the problem resolves itself. And change the needle. Did I say change the needle? Changing the needle is a, a big part of it too. So try all of that to see if it helps with those three threads. Um, Nick, Nick, nurse, thank you. I appreciate y'all learning from all of this because it's, it's important. This is a lot of information, but centering and making sure that things are a certain way does help and eliminate a lot of stress when you're trying to process orders, right? Hey, Catherine Stanley, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, Colette, the 650, it doesn't stitch very large. And the machine doesn't stitch hats very well either. You you really need to be stitching on unstructured to get a really good stitch out. Um, and God forbid your customer wants those flat brim hats. That's impossible with that machine uh, because it's not made to use those types of hats. So, yeah, it's not the best for doing hats. It can do hats. You just have to get the right type of hat, and then you'll be able to embroider them. You're welcome to sewing, Brett. Am I familiar with the 10 needle fast? No, I am not, Miss Catherine Stanley. I haven't seen that. I'll take a look at it, though, but I have yet to see it myself. I didn't even know they had one. Um, Diana Henderson, is it beneficial to use the plastic grids that come with hoops, and how are they really used? I love the plastic grids, especially for my 4x4 embroidery machine. Especially for their 4x4 embroidery machine. We'll take a look at how to use that. All right, um, real quick, because we're almost out of time. I didn't realize it. There are ways to adjust the frame on the machine to get it closer to the bed of the machine. That is correct. I purchased a new set of screws and nuts that replaced my original screws. The replacements are shorter and nuts are... Oh, that's a good thought. I'll check that out. Allison, I heard that a hat design has to be digitized for a hat from the center out and from bottom up. That is, that is specifically correct. It, as Marge Campbell points out, it makes a huge difference. If it is digitized for a hat, if it's not digitized for a hat, it will stitch. I mean, the machine is not going to say, I don't want this and not stitch it, but it'll, a lot of times the hat will pucker or crease, um, or it just may not stitch out clean. You, you will notice a difference if you have it digitized for a hat. Now, for your customer, yes, that means you will have to charge them digitizing for a hat and if they want a left chest logo they got to pay for digitizing for a left chest logo um but i pass that cost on to my customers because you want a hat and you want a shirt then you got to pay for both of them so in most instances that's what they do it's just marge says i wish the commercial hoops had the plastic grids i considered making them myself uh but I just ended up doing the ruler method that I showed earlier where I laid a ruler over the top of the center marks on those hoops, and that's, that's how I had to make it work. I just, I just, uh. Hey, Jesse Gibson, how are you? I'm going to switch you guys over to, actually, let me, I don't want to put y'all through that. So I'm going to switch the cameras, actually, from that to that. And I'll show you the, uh, I hope I can show you the grid. Now that I think about it, I may not have the grid in here. I may not have a grid. Oh, yeah, I do, yeah, I do, yeah, I do, yeah, I do. So I'm switching the camera over to here, and we're going to grab a shirt and put it over here. 
and then let you see um let's see how does that look great all right so here is a small table we're going to put a shirt right here nope closer cool and let me grab a grid now with a brother um the brother miss marge the brother has the um grids with their machines because this is the grid for the largest hoop on that six needle embroidery machine so it does have grids so you know what i don't know if i have the right grid or do i what's this uh i got grids all over kingdom come i'm trying to tell you not all over they're all in one place but just knowing that i have the right one is what i'm trying to figure out okay so if this isn't the right one the principle still applies well it works okay so that might be the right one okay so here is a typical grid that would fit in an embroidery hoop all right so as you can see there are notches on the inside of these hoops right and the grid has notches as well a little cut out notches and what you would do the way to use that is once you hoop your project you would lay this grid into those notches and this would give you the center points of your hoop okay this will give you your centers so let's see how that translates on an actual shirt so let me grab i'm hoping these are my t-shirts and not yeah these are t-shirts okay so if i were to put a design on this shirt now this is supposed to be a bling shirt oh and it's v-neck yay the kind i despise but anyway so we're going to put a design on this shirt and i'm going to show you how i would hoop this with the grid okay so as i've shown you guys many times before when you are trying to find the chest area the bust of a shirt look for your armpits on the shirt okay because if you look at your shirt now that you have on i know you can't see me but if you look at the shirt that you have on now your armpit follow the bottom of that armpit all the way around just swing your arm around like this and see where it ends up it is a, for the most part dead center of the boobs right so this is your center chest okay so you i usually start out making sure that my shirt is nice and straight because a straight shirt helps you get your stuff straight okay so once you have your shirt straight i start out with my ruler now if i'm feeling you know kind of bold and funky then sometimes if if i'm just feeling myself that day i can take a uh design like this transfer for instance and because the shirt is laying straight i can kind of eyeball it and lay it down and kind of get it centered so you want kind of like the center of the design to be you know as close to the center of the boob as you can because when you standing up looking at your shirt people are looking what well, y'all on the wrong darn camera aren't you yes sorry lord father i apologize i'm glad i looked up there because i would have been really frustrated with myself had i came back over there but at least oh wait a minute hold on actually i can just show you y'all can see my boobs so as you see the armpit here you come around and boom you're at the boob right and usually when you're looking at a shirt you want the design to be front and center right here have you seen where people put a design on and it's on the gut and how distracting that is with the the thing i mean it's like oh my god it's on the gut who wants to look at somebody's tummy 
So you find your center point, okay, and come around. Usually that's where it is. Now, there are some exceptions to that. As I mentioned, like, for instance, your uh, raglan-type shirt, those aren't usually, they don't play fair always, but, you know, for the most part, and you can always hold up the shirt to your chest to see, you know, if you're getting it about right. But as I mentioned, this is V-neck, and I like to lay it out where it is. Uh, Y'all didn't even see the hoop either in the grid. Oh, my gosh. This is ridiculous. Anyway, so I like to lay my shirt out nice and straight, okay? And that helps me center myself. So it allows me to eyeball and kind of get it centered and boom, you know, I just throw shirts and keep going with that. But if I'm super particular and I really, really, really want to get it right, I bring out my ruler. But before I do that, I'm going to show you what I was trying to show you earlier. As you see with this hoop, it has the notches. And here's the grid that lays on top. Now, this is for those of you who have hoops that come with the grid. So I know the brother hoops come with it. Even the multi-needle machine comes with the grid. So here's one. And you would just lay the um, hoop grid in up against those notches, and it automatically centers and helps you line up your stuff, right? Okay, so here is a ruler. We're going to take this ruler, and I usually go armpit to armpit, all right? Just to get a general idea, armpit to armpit looks like I'm coming in at 22 inches. Okay, so 22 inches, so 11 is the center, and bam, look, what's at 11 right here? It's the point of that V-neck. So I know I'm in the right general direction, okay? So generally, I'll put a little mark somewhere. I try not to put a, especially on these black shirts, I try not to put a big mark, but that's a little bitty mark to help me get my center all right but once i find my center i want to make sure that not only is the design centered but that it's centered this way as well i don't want it to be crooked right so i try sometimes to go uh seam to seam at the very bottom of the armpit seam to the very bottom of the next armpit Sometimes that works out great. Sometimes it doesn't. For the most part, it's great, though, for the most part. So let's go ahead, and what I'm going to do is, for the sake of argument and time, because we're about to run out of time, is this is the center here. I already know that, and it's already marked. Okay? So I'm also going to kind of make, because I don't want a whole bunch of chalk that I'm going to have to try and clean off of this shirt. So I just do light marks all the way across to be straight on the shirt. All right, so what does that help me do? Not only does that help me with if I already know where the center of this design is, even though with this one you can't see through it, but if it was a rhinestone, I can line this up by seeing through the transparency on the rhinestone design or with embroidery. What I can do is take this, make sure that grid is in the grooves where it's supposed to be, all right, which this would fit better if it was the grid that went with the hoop, but it's not. It'll be all right. But you make sure that it's lined up, and then you lay it on those chalk lines. So here's the center. I want to make sure that that center is lined up here. And then because I went across this shirt, I want to try my best to see through this grid to that line in the background. Now, because it's clear and see-through, even though I still have the film on it, I can still see through it and make sure that that yellow chalk line, I can even see it right here through this hole, make sure that yellow chalk line is lined up with this center line going straight across. And there I have a hoop that's centered. Now, translating this to actually getting it hooped and it staying centered, that's a feat all in itself. It can be done because one thing's for certain, once you get it hooped, you can always double check it with that, uh, with that line, that chalk line. That's what that chalk line is there for. It's your friend. Chalk is your friend. So 
that's how you use the grid. So I'm going to try it again with the hoop under here, which I can see now that hoop is kind of crooked, but yep, it's way off. So I can adjust the hoop on the bottom side of this shirt by pushing it through the shirt. See how I'm pushing it with the shirt up under. And all the while, I need to make sure I wish this was the right do flocking, but it's not. Okay. So all the while, I'm making sure that this is where it's supposed to be, and I'm filling this hoop. And as you see, it's still way off. So I need to slide this forward some more. All right. Slide it forward a good bit, actually. It won't let act stupid. Come on. Get under there. All right. And so now I'm going to check again. It's still off a little bit. Push it forward some more. All the while, keeping it centered, making sure it's on that chalk line that's my friend, and it's really close. So now, see, I got the hoop nestled in on this side. I can still see that it's lined up where it's supposed to be for the most part. It's off just so, oh, well, that's because this darn thing is ain't, ain't right. All right, so I still see it's lined with it. It's off a little bit, but it's close. And right now, I'm just praying for close. And let's see, how is this one over here? This one shifted. So that's, you know, pretty much how you get it where it's centered. And then you lock it in place, and there you have a shirt that's centered with the line going straight across like it's supposed to and centered with the hoop. So that's how you use the grid to hoop your shirt and to make sure that your shirt is centered on your placement line like you want it to be but you do have to mark the clothing in order to find have something to use this to go by all right and then of course once you're done you just brush on the shirt and boom chalk is gone hallelujah look how well things work out when you just do things the right way all right 11 o'clock we did a shirt, we did a duffel, we did a hat, centered, not actually stitched it, centered. Y'all saw boobs? I mean, it was it was a great show. It was, it was, I think it was a great show. It's always a great show to me, but I really think this was a great show. And I want to thank, I'm pretty sure it was Miss Shirley Stewart, not 100% sure. I have to go back and check the hoop group. But thank whomever hoop group member it was that suggested centering because, as I mentioned earlier, you kind of take for granted and think that centering is second nature because we all have to center everything we do. But it never hurts to have reminders and some tips and tricks along the way as you go. And also, if you don't want to use chalk, you don't have to use chalk. You don't have to use ink of any sort. You can use pens. So you can do a straight pen, you know, the quilting pens, put a pen in where the center is, put a pen in on the opposite line and use that to mark where you're going to center your stuff and then take the pins out before you stitch. There's more than one way to skin cat. It really is. <laughs> um, Marge Campbell says on my uh, commercial SG, GS, sorry, 1501, I have little bumps on the hoop, but they are not centered. I use a ruler and find the center and mark it on the stabilizer. Yeah, I have, um, I'm trying to remember what hoop it is, and it's not centered either. And, oh, that thing just annoys me. I don't understand why it would be off center. I ain't figured that part out yet, and I haven't asked. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Sheila Cushionberry probably could use the Dollar Tree Clear Cutting Mat and Cricut to etch lines and make own template. And I did attempt to do that. But that was harder than I thought it was going to be. It really was. I was quite disappointed because getting that design, just, ooh, girl, it was, I had a fit. So, I don't know. We may try again at some other time. Uh, like Marcy had tried, but it was too many errors. Uh, oh, you did see the hoop in the grid? Okay, cool. Thank you, Miss Lila Nelson. I didn't know. Um, let's see. I'm a bit lazy, I guess, but what I am embroidering is usually EMS jackets and shirts and on a time crunch, easy just to mark the stabilizer. And yeah, hooping is my hardest part. And it can be, Allison. Uh, for most folks, hooping is a pain. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be good to go. 
I normally hoop my shirts. I hoop everything. Very rarely do I float. Rarely, rarely, rarely do I float. I, the only thing I float are things that are hard to hoop, like onesies, for instance, are a pain in the butt. So I float those. Uh, but generally, just I hoop them. Um, and like Joanna Holmes pointed out, hooping will cause hoop burn. But I have a remedy for that. I just take one of these little squirt bottles. You can get these from Dollar Tree, two or three of them for a buck. Um, I fill it up to about here with water. And then I take just a little teeny cap full of vinegar, white vinegar, and I pour it in there and shake it up. And then I spritz that around where the hoop burn is, not the whole shirt, and I don't soak it. I just, you know, mist where the hoop burn is, and then I rub the shirt, rub the surface of the shirt. And that usually gets rid of the hoop burn. I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> don't soak the shirt. Just mist around where that hoop and just rub it, and it, it tends to go away for me. Uh, I was always told that hooping is the best. Well, you have to understand the hoop is there to help you. It's there to help you hold the shirt in place. So if you don't use it, I mean, that's what, that's what it's there for. I don't understand why folks say that it's just the worst thing ever to hoop. But I understand it's quicker in a lot of instances to float. Um, but, no, I do not float my stuff. I want to make sure my stuff don't move. And sometimes spray adhesive leaves residue or um, spray adhesive makes your hoops all gunky or sticky stabilizer can be gunky as well. I mean, there's a whole list of things that would make me say, you know what, I'm just going to hoop it and be done with it. So you're welcome. You're welcome. Bella Ann, I have a hard time with T-shirt material. What can I do to keep it from puckering? Uh, very thing that we spoke of earlier, I would get a fusible stabilizer. A fusible stabilizer, um, it helps because it sticks to the shirt. Let me see, is this it? Yep. This is a fusible stabilizer right here. The way you can tell a fusible stabilizer other than the packaging is it looks like a regular stabilizer on the front, but on the back it's super shiny. You see the shiny? It's super shiny. Woo. It's shiny. That's because that's the glue. So you would lay this on the back of the shirt so actually let's show it real let's see what time are we three minutes over that ain't too bad it ain't too bad if you need to leave i understand so let's go back to the shirt so what i would do in this instance because this is a t-shirt and it's one of those stupid next level shirts that are super super soft and super stretchy and stretches all the kingdom come and just irritates the hound dog out of me when it comes to embroidery see that did have a hoop burn to it um and I would spray it, but that's a whole nother step that, well, we can spray it. Hold on. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to get this spray over here because I think that other one I just sprayed was alcohol. So here's my Dollar Tree um, spray bottle right here. And all I do is spritz the outer edge. And when I rub... They have to do it a couple of times, but I rub to the side and I rub up and down. And, you know, hoop, hoop burn is pretty much gone good enough to where customer can't see it. Bam! Just like that. Okay. So with fusible stabilizer, what I would do is find out where my design is going to be. We done deleted the line, so, you know, whatever. But I put this shiny side up on the back side of the shirt and iron it and what that does actually I think you're supposed to turn it inside out iron it from this side but read your manufacturer's directions it'll tell you and what that does is it irons it and it sticks to the shirt so notice this doesn't stretch this is like you know this isn't going anywhere it's not going to stretch whereas this crap stretches like horribly I just oh these are not my favorite shirts as you can tell so once you put the sticky stabilizer I mean, fusible stabilizer on the back and you iron it to the back of the shirt the area where it's going to embroider will not stretch stretching is what causes puckering stretching is what causes 
puckering in 99.8% of instances, okay? So you want to make sure that this is adhered good. And the cool thing about this is after you embroider on this, okay, so this is what you'll see on the back side of the shirt and the embroidery is where my hand is, this will be, you know, pressed to the shirt all the way around. You can kind of lift up on the edge and pull it and loosen it. Even though you ironed it to the shirt, it will come up and work it up to around the stabilizer and then trim it around the stabilizer just like you would if it wasn't fused to the shirt. Fusible stabilizer. It is a T-shirt's worst nightmare when it's wanting to pucker. So that is an option that you can use as well to help you keep from having puckered T-shirts. All right. Now, yes, it's an extra step. I know. Trust me, I know. Especially with those soft shirts, it's an extra step. But it is an extra step that will help. All right. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Awesome sauce came late, but you love the part you did catch. Thank you, Deborah Hemmings, Deborah Hemmings. Thank you for being a YouTube who remember, I appreciate it. So thank you very much. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. That's what's up. Oh, just saw a video on a cap stitch with 12.5 inch wide design on the red line. Yeah. I mean, you can't go bigger. You can't go taller, but you can go wider. So, yes, that is what's up. I have used that hat hoop. It worked well. Miss Social Dev said, you talking about the Gen 2? The Gen 2 is a good, good hat hoop from what I understand. I use a steamer for hoop burns. Yes, steamer works as well. Yes, the steamer does work as well. Lastly, Eve, thanks for the advice. If you don't, if you wear it, don't tear it. That, that's been a lifesaver. I appreciate it because I tell you what, I, there, I've been in groups, and there are some folks that will argue you up one wall and down the other short of calling you a liar to your face. If you say anything about you should only use wear it, if you wear it, don't tear it in there. Oh, I hate when people say that. Okay, it works, you know, but I guess for those folks, they've used tear away so long and so much that, you know, they're okay with using tear away, and that's fine, you know, because this is the thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with all sincerity. If it works for you, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it works for you, fine. That's awesome. I'm not here to convert anybody or to degrade anybody or anything. This is purely informational. What my experience is, what I've been taught by experts, okay, because I'm not talking about just Joe Blow folks. I'm talking about folks who have been in the industry for years. They've taught me, and it works for me, so I would want you to learn from commercial embroiderers too, what they do, you know, and Tearaway is not stretchy shirts. So at any rate, you're welcome to Sewing Brat. I appreciate it. You have fun with that uh, surgery you got over there. After embroidering, I pull the stabilizer off the fabric as much as I can and trim it. That is correct. You're welcome, Joanna Holmes. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. I didn't see. CCT says, first time watching one of your lives. Caught the last 30 minutes. Thank you for all the tips. You're welcome. Awesome sauce. And Sheila Cushenberry, yes, ballpoint needles on T-shirts. Please use a ballpoint needle, jersey knit needle. Um, it's ballpoint, jersey knit, and uh, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. Ballpoint, jersey knit, and stretch. Those are the three names of the exact same needle. It does the same thing. Ballpoint, jersey knit, or stretch needle. They all work the same. They don't tear up T-shirts, Okay. If you end up using a regular sewing needle to embroider on a T-shirt, you'll notice holes um, will come, you know, it's more jagged and holy looking around your embroidery. Um, I've used a regular needle with some of my T-shirts, but we're going to leave that alone because who wants to take and change a needle? Uh, red line, I only everybody goes through Valerie. It's Miss Valerie. She's awesome sauce. I absolutely love her. <laughs> I use titanium needles. Scooby Doo says I have two until I broke a couple of them, and then I'm like, if I can break a titanium needle, then darn it, I'm just gonna use whatever. So whatever the first thing I pick up out that box, 
I'm going to use because I have both. <laughs> but titanium is a good needle. Supposed to be stronger. Yes. You guys, I had a great night. This was a lot of fun. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I look so much forward to seeing your projects where you centered your designs. Please share pictures in the Who group. I look forward to seeing your perfectly centered designs. And if you found something that helps you get your project centered, what is that? You know, because I, I just use the few tips that I've used, but some people use tape. Um, so let me know in the comments below what your favorite centering trick is, all right, and what helps you, because what helps you could help somebody else. So share it. We'd love to hear about it. So until the next time we see, oh, actually, hold up, captains, those of you who are hoop group captains here on YouTube, your week is coming up this weekend, okay? So this coming weekend, we will have our captains live with our project. So please keep that in mind. Keep an eye out on your YouTube announcements and your emails for uh, a notification from YouTube should be coming your way Wednesday, Thursday, um, as long as I don't forget to get your notification out and uh, let you know where to go for your file for the project, okay? So aside from that, I just look forward to seeing the rest of you guys all around in the Who group on Facebook, okay? <laughs> so thanks for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. And until the next time we see you, we hope you have happy centering. Yay! <laughs> Y'all have a good evening. Bye. <laughs> Can you tell I'm tired and need to go to bed? That's probably what I need to do.